Hello, good people of Open Art. Today, we're super excited to share with you our latest update Open Art Video Upscale powered by Topaz Labs. Topaz Labs is here. To get started, let's take a look at the new Open Art Video Upscaler. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and click video here, and you'll see the new side panel open up, and we can simply click on video upscale. Now in this area, you can bring in an existing video or upload one as you normally would. So I'm going to click on here and select history, and I'm going to select this video and confirm. We can also just collapse this menu since we're not using it. In the top corner, you'll see the original resolution of the video clip and the duration. It says five seconds at 1280 by 720. And in the drop down, you'll see that you have options all the way up to 4K. Now, with that being said, there is capabilities to do it with 8K. We're just working out some bugs. Hopefully by the time I post this video, 8K will be available. But to be honest, 8K is kind of overkill. I think 4K is more than enough. Obviously, depending on the starting resolution and how much you upscale, the costs may vary. So you see here it's 150 credits and it'll take about eight to nine minutes going from 720 to 4K. Now, let's say I just want to go to 2K. You see that it's only 100 credits to upscale this particular clip. Now, before we move on, I want to show you visually the differences between resolutions. I can assume that you all understand how resolution works. In some of the video models, there is actually even 480p, even 580p, which is standard definition. Now, I don't have it listed on my chart because this is more for when you upscale. So regular HD, the resolution is 1280 by 720. Full HD is 1920 by 1080. And most of the video models we have on OpenArt, the max resolution is 1080p. And this is where the upscaler comes in very handy because now we can go all the way up to 2K, which is 2560 by 1440. 4K, 3840 by 2160. And if you really want maximum quality at 8K, that's 7680 by 4320. I'm going to use this clip in particular to show the resolution. And I'm also going to zoom it in for you. But this is 12.2 at 480p. From a distance, it doesn't look too bad. But when you zoom in closely, you see the details are lacking quite a bit. After upscaling it to 4K, you see the details are much clearer, sharper, and it doesn't stutter as much, which has to do with frame interpolation, which we'll talk about later. But basically, that's the benefits of upscaling your video footage. You might even see or hear people refer to resolution as 1080p, 1440p. And the P doesn't mean pixels, it means progressive scan. And basically that's just the way the image is displayed from top to bottom. And if you look at the numbers here, we would say 720p, 1080p, 1440p, so on and so forth. Here's another example of footage that was shot in 480p. And once again, if we zoom in here, you see that the details aren't as sharp. They're quite lacking and there's a bit of stutter. But after upscaling it to 4K, you see that the movement is buttery smooth. The details are nice and sharp. Now, mind you, I'm only recording in 2K. I can't record it in 4K because my system can't handle it, but the differences are very clear. So now let's talk about frame interpolation. Generally, what this does, it helps to smoothen out footage. So if you're going from something like 16 frames per second to 30 or 60, when you use this feature, it creates artificial frames in between to increase the frames per second, and visually it gives it a smoother output. Most cinematic movies are shot in 24 frames per second. Broadcast TV and your typical YouTube video is typically shot in 30 frames per second. Some may actually use 60 to get more of a smoother feel, and especially if you're a streamer. But once you get up to 90 to 120 frames per second, one of the main reasons why you would shoot in 120 frames per second is to slow down that footage. Otherwise, 120 FPS is kind of overkill. 
why do frames per second matter? Well, if you look at the top left example there, this footage is shot in 16 frames per second. So you can see it's rather choppy. It's not very smooth at all. On the top right, we have 30 frames per second. This is what most of us are used to. You can really see the big difference. It's almost double the frames per second resulting in smoother output. If we look at the bottom left, which is 60 FPS, and the bottom right at 120, there really isn't much difference you can see at its full speed. So why bother even having 120 frames per second? Well, if you look at this clip, this is the one at 30 frames per second, slowed down to 50%. As you can see, it has that jagged look. It's obviously missing frames. But now if we take the footage that's 120 frames per second, slow it down to 50%, you see that we have a much smoother output. And that's because we have more frames to work with, so it's much easier to slow things down with more frames per second. So having more frames per second to slow down footage is probably the main reason why you would want 90 or 120 frames per second. In most cases, 30 will do, 60 at the most. Here's another 16 frames per second clip, and you can see the obvious jitter in the footage. It's not smooth at all, and it might even irritate your eyes a little bit. But even increasing this to 30 frames per second smoothens out the footage so it's more visually appealing. Uh, right from the start, yeah, I open heart. Have no fear, Topaz Labs is here. Right from the start. Yeah, I open art. Have no fear. Topaz Labs is here.